April the 25th, 1915, men of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps landed at Gallipoli. It was on that day the traditions of our fighting forces were born. These stories of their sons and daughters at war we proudly dedicate to the memory of Anzac. G'day everyone, it's Warren here from NQ Explorers on another World War II sortie. Uh, Colleen's not with me today, she's actually at work, which is uh, no good for her. <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to do today is a little bit different to uh, normal, I'm going to go sniping. I've got a, uh, I've got an old school with the old AT Pro International, I'll show you that in a minute, with a smaller coil. And my intention is to uh, hit the, um, the heavily detected areas, and they've been detected heavily by me, Colleen, and many, many other detectorists and uh, low and slow with the little coil, better target separation, a clearer response on the target IDs, and I can pull out, maybe, some uh, high tone targets that everyone's missed. So what we're running here today is this. It's the AT Pro International. Now that's been around for quite a long time now, as you all realize. Still one of the best, switch on and go, professional level relic hunting machines in the world. Um, it's got effectively six modes. Um, uh, three different settings for two different modes. I use it in the pro mode and uh, notch out. It's all fully programmable so you can notch out and program it however you like whatever environment you're in. So that's the AT Pro International and on it I've got the Nell Snake coil. Now that's, uh, I could have just bought a Garrett Sniper which is a four and a half inch concentric. This snake is slightly narrower and longer. I like the elliptical shape of it. Um, as you can see that's better for getting in amongst uh, tight spots. The sniper is very, very good too, but uh, I'm just going to run this one today and see what happens. Actually, the snake I've found, and all the mill calls for that matter, on the Garrett's, on the AT machines, um, really enhance the performance of the machine. It brings it up to another level. So, I uh, hope you enjoy our little sortie here today. Let's go sniping for World War II relics. That's pretty consistent. Low 80s over there. Nice high tone on the pro. I'm not going to be far from that coil. It's a fairly soft signal, so um, so the small, or it is deep. Oh, it's getting louder. That sounds good, doesn't it? 83. Not right on it with the pinpointer yet, as you can hear that. 83. I like it. Lot. <laughs> nice high tone. That's actually the first uh, tone I've got all day. Well, first thing this morning. Okay, it's in the heap here. Don't see anything coming out. And we've got what looks like a button. Let's have a look at this. I think it's a button, definitely a military button. Um, I can't quite make that out. Let's give it a clean, a bush, bit of a bush clean, and we'll see if we can identify that button. That's a ripper. It was an 83, 84, as you saw on the uh, target ID on the Pro. Well, what happened to that ripper start of the day? That's literally the first target in this spot with the snake, and it's a Dutch East Indies military button. You can see it's a lion grasping a sword the swords on the left there the shanks complete just bent back and it's covered in dirt I'll clean this properly and get some steel picks that's a Dutch East Indies Netherlands East Indies an EI army button from World War II what a ripper right well that's a great start to the day I'm just gonna head down slope through this long grass with the little coil Okay, we're a few metres further into the forest. And I've got a 77, 78 here. Yeah, that's a nice high tone on the Pro. Let's have a look at the target ID. Nice and tight. 
under that snake there. It's up the forward area of where I've been digging. As you can hear, it's a little way off the pinpointer yet. I've got that on a sensitivity of three, by the way. I mean, you don't want your uh, you really don't want your pinpointer picking up things too far away because that's not the point of a pinpointer. That's what the coil does. Pinpointer is meant to localize what you're looking for, not increase your detecting field. Something good here. Oh, there's metal here. What do we got? It just fell out. And we have another button. Wow. That's not bad. <laughs> Two buttons within 10 metres. Okay. I'll give this one a clean and identify it. Right, well, that fine was actually a, <laughs> a tiny grommet. The uh, dirt fell out of the hole and with it went my hopes. But have a look at this. Beautiful. I believe to be a golden orb spider. I'll come into it in a minute. Um, you uh, arachna experts, whatever the word is for that, will tell me I'm wrong. But look how big his web is. He goes from that tree to there, about six metres to this twig. Actually, I'm, I'm caught up in his web over here. But here he is in the middle. If I, can, I guess I've got no chance of the camera focusing on that. There he is there. Beautiful big example. Well, I think that's a golden orb. They're all through this forest. I'll be getting a face full of them all day. Beautiful spot. Nice little bracken fern grove over there. Unfortunately, a lantana grove further in. That's going to be rampant. We won't be able to... Uh, dig in there very soon okay well this target's a as you can see it's a poncho grommet or a small tent grommet it was a target id of 64 very repeatable and compact um you can tend to get lazy in these world war ii camps because most of the targets are in the 70s and 80s the good ones there's lots of lower down but there's no junk generally and very little iron that i've ever come across but you have to dig the 60s the reason being that this camp in particular was in use so uh, up till about 1949 so um, that means that the uh, silver coins after 46 were 50 percent so a silver threepence Australian silver threepence will be in the 60s that could have just as well have been a silver coin at 64 because the sterling ones are much higher but uh, you have to dig the 60s and of course um, a half sovereign's 58 upwards so <laughs> you really don't want to be ignoring your 58s anyway that's just uh, a target that I'm going to be digging all day. I won't show you every grommet I dig. Of course, the thing about the small core, you're not going to really cover a lot of ground. And there's a lot of ground. <laughs> so, you've got to use it uh, with a bit of intelligence. And that is, I use it not so much for sweeping large open areas, because that's not what it's designed to do. I'm looking for clusters of, uh, dense clusters of targets and, uh, and rubbish. Up in that direction, which is kind of the north from here, about six or seven hundred meters i probably won't get there today but there's a big area there where i've got lots and lots of coins and relics and rising suns and things over the years um this snake would do well in there if i get up there in a couple of hours we'll have a crack in there too it's worth using the small coil in spots like that where you can separate the targets and you a machine can recover quickly between targets which you can't do with like an 11 inch standard coil the way i'm using this though today is maneuverability in around the trees you know like spots like this big coil's not going to go in there so that's how i'm going to use this snake and i'll tell you what the snake really transforms this uh, at pro um the garrett st uh, sniper is a very good coil it's a four and a half inch it's slightly wider than this but this is longer and more elongated so it's very maneuverable in this kind of situation so uh just a great day to be out in the bush um I'm pretty stoked with that uh, Netherland East Indies button. That's a lovely bit of history. Uh, colonial Dutch relic from World War II here in Queensland, Australia. Okay, let's get on. It's an unfortunate find. It's a little wallaby skull. It's been there quite a while, but I'll tell you what, the drought took its toll in this area. You wouldn't know there'd been a drought now. Look how green it is. But uh, used to be lots and lots of uh, wallabies and roos, eastern greys in here, but I haven't seen one this morning. There was a few casualties of the drought. Very unfortunate. Well, this is promising. There's some wildlife in here. Probably a roo. You can see his claw marks. Been digging for something there. I don't know what it might have been an echidna, actually. I'm not sure. But uh, definitely wildlife. 
Okay, I'll just show you the settings I got on the Pro today. <clears throat> I mean, Pro Custom. I've got 31 iron. Let's make that 30. Nice even number. Flat out sensitivity because the ground's very neutral. And uh, I've notched out 40 to 50. Because I'm not really looking for those targets at the moment. Um, 50 up covers all the uh, gold sovereigns and military relics uh, up to Florham, which is in the 90s. Um, I've actually gone through a really quiet patch which was not that direction, it's that direction. Haven't had a target for about 15 minutes. Not a single target. So I'm going to turn on my iron audio so that I can hear the iron. Now, it would have been detecting it, but I have to be looking at the screen constantly otherwise. Now I can hear it. Once I start hearing patches of iron and rubbish, and there's not much in here, uh, I'll slow down and uh, really utilise this coil for what it's designed. Not really designed for what I just... I just came through 15 minutes of nothing with a tiny little coil. That's why I got the... Uh, sensitivity flat out mind you um i wouldn't miss a penny if there was one there uh all these garrett at machines you don't even have to swing the coil over a penny and you'll hit it off to the side uh it's such a large conductive target um been a lot of pennies found in here over the years by colleen and myself um there were still a few in here but uh I, I wouldn't miss a penny with this little coil but you would miss a small sixpence at depth uh, if you weren't concentrating on what you're doing, you got that call right on the deck to maximise uh, its use. Okay, we'll set this one up for a live dig. Uh, whatever it is, it's going to be a random drop because there weren't any targets anywhere around it. I'll just uh, put the machine down there and I'll just show you where the target is. That's a 72-73. Could be a cordial bottle lid. Don't know. Not really any iron around the area here or any other targets for, uh, you know, 20 or 30 metres that I've walked. Um, nice and conductive though, I like the sound of it. Now it's saying 75 and I've uh, just taken an inch off there. Right on top of it here. Bring you in to have a look with me. Right there. We'll just be very careful with this. It could be a coin, it could be a halfpenny or something. Could be a 303. <laughs> Is it a 303? Yeah, it's a rim cartridge. 303 hull. Fairly typical of the signals you get from uh, expended ammunition. Now that's all good though. Let's take us out of the hole. That's the hole there. Maybe it's not. I thought it sounded like it was moved. Get another little bit of uh, tickle up there. Okay, it's definitely out of the hole now. Oh, what is it? Oh, look at this. It's a little, uh, that was the target. It was a 74.75. A little flower brooch or something. That's nice. Obviously, there's a building here where I just found that little flower, possibly off a nurse's civilian attire. As you can see, some terracotta pottery there from the uh, sewage system. There's my next find. It's actually a sunbaker. 50 caliber hull. I don't know what that was doing in here, but obviously they had 50 cal anti-aircraft weapons, I suppose, and 50 cals on uh, vehicles. This is probably another ammo hull. You know, 70, not quite in pinpoint range. It's a 70, but uh, a little bit jumpy. We'll just scrape it back layer by layer and just keep checking it with a pinpointer. Maybe far down, it could be another 303 hole. Just picking up on it there a little bit. Let's check it with the machine, eh? So you can hear what it sounds like. Oh, it's in the sound of the hole. 
all over the place now. I think it's a bit... Uh... Okay, it's in the center of the hole. But the target ID is really jumpy. Never mind. It's going to keep us entertained for a couple of minutes here. We'll see what we get. A bit of depth to it. But it's going to be World War II. What's that? Oh, that's uh, glass, obviously. So it could be. Could be a bottle top. No, what have we got down here? Well, target's up here near my boots. <laughs> we dragged it out in that last. It's just a piece of uh, bent foil. Probably presented pretty well to the call initially, but then it took. Yeah, well, it's off the milk bottle tops, I think. One of those type of third point bottle tops. I'm going to show you this one right from the start. It's a very intriguing signal. Hear that? I'm getting to 76, 77, jumps to 80, but it is so, you can hear that proportional audio is very soft. So the call's not on the target, in here in this little grass clump. So they're very small, very deep target, but I'm getting high target IDs. I like this a lot. I'm going to go live. Risk all sorts of embarrassments here. About there we're going to dig. And... Uh, I'm sure you'll hear they get louder as you get deeper. Nice laying the soil just here. Get some moisture here and there in the little rills where the, the rain runs down the uh, bush slope. Some areas are really dry. Okay, that's as now a 79.80. Here it's a lot louder because I've taken off two inches of soil and um, Leaf leather. Okay, let's go steady, steady. See what comes up. May not be much further down actually. Okay, it's out of the hole. Is it? Okay, it's in this clump that I. Well, this is intriguing. Let's put that pinpointer away. Um, a little bit of a soil ball, which we'll uh, reveal now. Okay, what's this? Is that the target? I think it is, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a silver sixpence. Yes, it is. Well, that was an awesome uh, little recovery. You could hear it was very soft from the surface as we got closer. Target ID got louder, or the, the audio got louder. I can see it's silver, and that's a little, that'll be a sterling threepence with those kind of numbers. I'll give it a bush clean and we'll check the date. Okay, there it is. It's an absolutely magnificent 1942 uh, Denver Mint, 9042D, um, sterling silver Australian threepence. Um, I guess if you've watched my videos in the past, I will have explained that a lot of our silver coins were minted in the United States uh, in the war because the Royal Australian Mint was uh, under so much pressure to produce change. Australian silver was shipped to the US and minted in Denver and San Francisco, so that's a 42D. You can see the D under the 42 there, under the 2. Absolute ripper, King George VI, reference. Love the way that proportional audio worked that signal up. Just love this pro on relics. Okay, well I've been going about an hour and a half and I'm probably just over a kilometre from the Land Rover which is parked in the bush in that direction, behind the camera. This is as far as I'm going to go in this direction. The camp goes a long way yet, but with the little coil I don't want to really be just covering big areas. I want to be cherry picking things if I can. That sixpence just then was a random, uh, threepence was a random drop. That was a great find. So I'm going to go another kilometre back to the car and see what I can ping on the way back. And maybe you discover some new spots. I've actually seen a bit of uh, infrastructure in here today. Uh, that I've not spotted before. It's amazing you just keep coming back to the sites, but they're so large I mean uh, You can walk past things several times before you actually see them. So we're going to head back towards the Land Rover um, And see what we can get uh, in the bush in the intervening uh, Walk that's kind of the extent of what That big black tree you can see up there. That's as far as I went. I turned around there came back got this lovely 80 signal So uh, that's good. Let's go
Well, this is the spot where I found the uh, a collar rising sound and a couple of coins about a month ago. Funny how you keep coming back to the same spots. <laughs> it's the same with the relics or gold, you always go and check your patch. But I've got this little uh, snake on here today, so I haven't done it with a snake. We'll have another little uh, sweep around here just to see if I've missed anything. Well, we did miss something last time. It was only a 65, I'm not really sure what it is, some sort of punch tag. I don't think it's got any writing on it. No. Never mind. I thought it might have been some sort of machinery tag or equipment tag. Right, this one's up in the 80s. It was a bit jumpy though. I'm not confident, but uh... Whoa, 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 what have we got here? It's uh... Looks like a button. There's a shank there. Definitely a button. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be Australian Army tunic button. What a ripper. Alright, so we've got a Dutch button and an Aussie button. We'll give it a bush clean and we'll get it up close. Well, there she is. Look at the patina. It is just beautiful. Mauve and green. A beautiful Australian Army tunic button. That's a, a breast pocket. You can see Australia with the crown and it'd be to say Commonwealth Military Forces. I've got a shank on the back. I haven't cleaned it properly there. Just bush cleaned the front. Probably the Stokes of Melbourne. They made most of them, I think. Well, I believe. Um, look at that. Two armies today. Australia and the Dutch East Indies. Ripper. Well that button's a good example of sniping with that snake coil. Any small coil will do on a high-end detector. That's the hole I haven't filled in. But all around here, you can see this piece of broken concrete and there's some old iron over there. It's just targets clutter everywhere. 50s, 60s, iron, grunting. And this pinged that button there out of all this clutter. Really enjoyable stuff, sniping. Well, we're less than halfway back to the Land Rover. Uh, that's what happens when you detect your way back to the car, which is the uh, sensible thing to do. If you haven't got the detector on, you're just walking through the bush, you're not going to find anything. Let's keep going. Well, there's a the surface find a sunbake. It's an awesome little lock. Look at this. Got a real good neck. <laughs> I wonder if it's got a branding on it. I think the front face has come off it. That's the mechanism by the look of it. I'm not sure. Uh, might be a little trunk locker or something. It was definitely uh, not modern. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little outing, everyone. Thanks for coming along with me. And happy fossil king. Bye for now. Bye. Uh -huh.